Hello, I'm Dr. Johnson Seigelman from physicsthisweek.com. Let's take a look at the speed of light in different media. By the end of this lesson today, you're going to be able to determine the speed of light in a medium or the index of refraction once you're given enough information. And we're going to make use of the equation N is equal to C over V. As long as we have a wave staying in the same medium, it stays at the same speed. But imagine that you have a band that is walking across a nice turf field into some mud. Well, naturally they're going to slow down, so they're not going to make as much progress in a given amount of time. And that is something that we can measure. Now, if we have a wave going into that different situation, so for example, going from air into water, the speed of the wave is going to change. Now we have a definitional equation called N is equal to C over V. This defines the index of refraction to be the speed of light in vacuum divided by the speed of light in the particular material. Now the speed of light is given by 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And that is a constant as long as you stay in vacuum. So if you've learned that the speed of light is constant, you're almost there. You have to add the caveat to that as long as you stay in vacuum. In other materials, it's going to slow down uh, sometimes quite a bit. Okay, so let's look at two different media. Oftentimes what we'll do is use a small subscript. So we've got N1 is equal to C over V1, and we could compare that to N2 is equal to C over V2. You wanna make sure that you keep track of which variable is which as you're going through that. Okay, so let's actually look at a uh, wave in a medium. We've got the wave coming in. It has a nice long wavelength. It hits the interface and it slows down going forward. Now, some of it does reflect back up, but we're interested in what happens in the second medium. Here it hits. Notice that the frequency is the same in both places. So you definitely see that speed changing. That frequency stays constant because as each wavefront hits the interface, it's essentially both places at the same time. Frequency down below is the same as the frequency up above. But because the speed changed, the wavelength changes. If we look at this mathematically, we've got the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And look at the two different situations. V1 over lambda 1 is equal to the frequency, but that's also equal to V2 over lambda 2. So having a larger V gives you a larger wavelength to keep that fraction that's equal to the frequency exactly the same. This is a chart from the University Physics OpenStax textbook. And you can see here that air, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen all have very similar indices of refraction of about one, which means that down to four significant digits for all of these, the speed of light is essentially the same as it would be in vacuum because dividing by 1.000293 doesn't change the value of C very much. However, if you go into liquids or further into solids, you can see there is a larger number here now, the numbers range um, depending on the material that you're going into, giving us different speeds in different materials. So if we take a look at a specific example here with air going into diamond, we want to know how the speeds compare. We're going to look off of that table and pull out to several decimal places, four significant digits in this case, to get N of air is equal to 1.000. The N of diamond is equal to 2.419. And the speed of light is equal to, of course, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now the base equation we're going to start from here is N is equal to C over V. But because we wanna look at the speeds, we're going to divide a little bit, get V is equal to C over N. So we'll look at air versus diamond. For air, we throw in subscripts for air to get V of air is equal to C over N of air. And then we're going to throw in our number. So we get V of air is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by one. Not surprisingly, that gives us back V of air is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. 
Okay, if we look at diamond, we're going to put the speed in diamond is equal to C divided by the index of refraction of diamond. We'll throw in our numbers. So we've got V over our V of diamond is equal to uh, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by 2.419. And if we do that division, we get V in diamond is equal to 1.239 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now, if I look at this closely, because I'm dividing by 2.419, this is about half. It's not quite half because it's not dividing exactly by two, but fairly close. So notice that the speed in diamond is a little less than half the speed in air, which means that it's moving uh, actually quite a bit slower. Okay, so in review, we've got the speed of light can change depending on the media that you're in. Uh, the definitional equation of this is N is equal to C over V, uh, or the index of refraction is the speed of light in vacuum divided by the speed of light in the material. And if you look at that carefully, you can see that having a higher index of refraction leads to a lower speed. And conversely, a lower index of refraction represents a faster speed.